In today's video, we're gonna break down the differences between two absolutely incredible breeds, the Siberian Husky and the Alaskan Malamute. Welcome back to the Femrear Husky Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist, and I'm the founder and CEO of FemreaCanineLeaders.com. Now, this channel here is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about Siberian Huskies, and then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect Husky companions. So if you're a lifelong Husky lover, thinking about getting your first one, and you just start in your journey with a Siberian Husky, then I promise you this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn the on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Siberian Husky video. So today we'll be taking a look at what separates the Siberian Husky and the Alaskan Malamute. And in this overview, we're going to be highlighting some of the major key differences. Now, in my opinion, to all really know and understand something first, you must learn about its origins because dogs were bred for specific purpose and often that is what will help separate two very similar breeds. So let's jump straight into the history and origins. So first of all, to understand the breeds, we must first discuss these origins. And the Siberian Husky was bred by the Chukchi people to be used to carry light loads at a pretty reasonable pace, but over extremely long distances. They didn't reach the US until 1909 when a Russian fur trader by the name of William Gusak introduced them to Nome, Alaska, during the gold rush as sled dogs. Now they gained popularity as sled racing took off, but it took until about 1930 for the breed to become recognized by the American Kennel Club. Now the Alaska Malamute are considered one of the oldest sled dogs, and there is a reason for that. They can be traced back over 12,000 years, also originating in Siberia. They were developed as a pack dog designed to pull heavy weight over large distances. They were also designed to be kept as companion dogs for the whole family after a long day at work. Now, Malamutes are thought to be bred by the Malamute Incopac people of Alaska's Northern Sound region. Now, during the gold rush, it was the Malamute tribe's isolation that preserved the pure bloodlines of the Malamute that we get the pleasure of seeing today. Now let's talk about how to differentiate the two in terms of looks. The Siberian Husky is the smaller of the two, the Siberian Husky being a medium sized breed that has more fox-like characteristics. The males can be up to 60 centimeters or 24 inches tall with a rate range between 20 and 27 kilos or 45 to 60 pounds with the females just being a little bit smaller. Now the Siberian Husky is well known for those beautiful eyes and what's called bi-eyed, one blue eye and one brown eye. They can also have have brown, green, or mixed colored eyes. The Amaskan Malamute, on the other hand, is a large breed dog that has more wolf-like characteristics. The males come in bigger with a height of around 71 centimeters or 28 inches, being 57 kilos or around 125 pounds. The Alaskan Malamute have brown eyes only. However, the shade of brown can then vary. Now, the AKC disqualifies them from having blue eyes. Both dogs can have thick double coats that are incredibly difficult to stay on top of. So if you get in one of these breeds, you have to be aware that that fur is gonna get everywhere. So let's look if there's any differences in terms of intelligence or trainability. Now, both the Siberian Husky and the Alaskan Malamute are intelligent, but the Siberian Husky really does shine in this department. The Siberian Husky being a little easier to train than the Alaskan Malamute, but both are not really recommended for first time owners. However, with strong, confident, consistent leadership, both can be amazing companion dogs. But it's very important to note proper training and socialization is needed needed for both the Alaskan Malamute and the Siberian Husky, but the Alaskan Malamute tends to have more issues with things like food aggression, resource guarding, and issues between the same sex of the breed. So this must be a focus in the training raising these breeds. Now, neither breed really makes for a good guard dog as they are more likely to make friends with an intruder due to their quite loving nature to humans. Now, obedience training is the key with these guys, so make sure that you are a calm, consistent leader that can be in charge. Now, being quite independently natured dogs, they do require a strong, calm, consistent leadership as it is imperative to have these dogs be able to look up to you for guidance and direction at all times, as if they don't have that they will start to make decisions for themselves and not only does this lead to behavioral issues but it can also lead to quite an unhappy household so it's vital that you get that leadership established immediately 
So let's look at temperament differences. And to do this, you must take in the origins of the breed, which is why we always start there. Huskies are quite content to spend periods of time without you. They are affectionately known as independent thinkers, like we just mentioned. And that does mean that they won't necessarily be an ultra obedient dog that is constantly looking to you for guidance and direction. Remember, they are working dogs, meaning that they have a huge amount of energy and they are used to living in packs with their pack mates that they work alongside. This instinct means that it can be challenging to train them. Now, because of their huge energy levels, they require lots of mental and physical stimulation, as without this, they can become quite destructive. These forms of destruction with these breeds are most often through kind of digging, jumping and chewing. The Siberian Husky is considered the Houdini of dogs as they are absolutely incredible escape artists. Now, the Malamute tends to be more aloof with strangers or those that he hasn't necessarily welcomed into the family environment. The Malamute does also have a very high prey drive and a low tolerance for other animals, quite often with other dogs as well. As they get to know you, this friendliness will grow into extremely loyal bond and a strong connection. However, because of their need for contact, separation anxiety is much more common with the Alaskan Malamute. So you need to make sure that you take a proactive and preemptive approach to this. Now, both, like I say, can be stubborn and only want to complete tasks asked of them when they feel like it. And this is definitely even more prominent with the Alaskan Malamute. So again, it always falls back to the importance importance of being a calm, consistent leader that has dogs that will look up to you for guidance and direction. And if you need any help with that whatsoever, we do have a lot of online resources available over on femreardogtraining.com or you can check out the links in the description box below. So let's look at the exercise and grooming for both of these absolutely beautiful breeds. When it comes to exercise, these guys are pretty similar and they both need lots and lots of it. They will need at least 90 minutes of good activity every single day, but this shouldn't just be a 90 minute walk. They really need to burn off some serious steam with intense exercise. This could be additional to walk, things like tug of war, frisbee, or even dog agility courses, sled pulling, pulling you on a bike, running alongside a bike, jogging with you, rollerblading with you. You get the idea. What's most important is that you understand that this is a breed that needs a lot of exercise. And that is because they are both such intense working dogs who were built to run miles and miles at a time without tiring. And this want for work is innate in them and can never be trained out of them. And if they do become bored, they will quickly destroy things and it can be anything that they will get their paws on as well as devolving into quite serious behavior problems. So let's get on to one of the most interesting areas of these breeds and that's the grooming now there does come a major cost to having such a beautiful coat and that is shedding the grooming of the alaskan malamute and the siberian husky is pretty much identical they both have a dense undercoat and fluffy outer coat and as such both breeds should be groomed ideally every single day possibly twice a day and during springtime when the weather starts to become warmer they will shed that winter coat heavily and therefore more grooming will be required even more on top of that just to keep it even somewhat manageable for you and your household now each dog should be bathed probably once a month more often than this will probably damage the balance of natural oils which keeps their coat healthy as well as not drying out their skin now this can cause itchy flaky skin which will be very uncomfortable for them if we bathe them too much now as adventurous as they are they will probably get dirt in between these baths so they will also need a little bit of a clean or spruce up once a week which you can do with either brushing out the fur or just giving them a very damp cloth wipe over. Now, when they do blow out these coats, which not only happens in the spring, but often happens around autumn time as well, it can only be described as a fur bomb exploding in your house. So please note that neither of these breeds are for somebody that is incredibly house proud or that doesn't want fur getting all over their clothes. It's also very worth noting that obviously due to where they were bred in Siberia and working for long periods of time in extremely cold climates, they are very prone to overheating in warm climates. So if you live somewhere hot, this probably isn't the right breed for you. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget that if you are new here to make sure that you subscribe as we have two dedicated Siberian Husky videos coming to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Husky Show.